Realtors abide by a code of ethics. This is Article 9 in action. Beth, a first-time homebuyer, knew nothing about the home buying process, except that she wanted to buy a home. But her Realtor had the expertise to make sure Beth understood every document, even giving her copies to review with her lawyer so Beth could close on her first home with confidence. Complicated things explained in simple terms. The difference between an agent and a Realtor is real. Realtors are members of the National Association of Realtors. That's who we are. This podcast is brought to you by the Washington State Department of Health. When we think about the COVID-19 vaccine hesitancy in the black community, let's remember, it didn't happen by chance. It's justified in history. But the will to change the narrative is strong today, and our people are lending their voices to the conversation. We're sharing our stories and the reasons that made us choose the vaccine so we can lead the way for others to make a well-informed choice, too. To hear our stories, visit hereforuswa.org. What's up? It's your boy, the Fed Smith. Thanks for listening to the Men's Room Daily Podcast. Want more? Check out the greatest podcast in all the land, the podcast. Be sure to subscribe and listen to a brand new episode every Tuesday night. We return to the men's room with Miles and Thrill. 99.9 KISW. Your guess is going to smile coming up after emails on a random question. Question categories today. Your favorite pizza toppings and children's favorite educational TV shows. Okay. Yeah, your guess is going to smile coming up. By the way, we're talking about uh, bus drivers. All right. mm-hmm. Some question about bus drivers, but uh, someone here says, My mom used to drive the school bus for high school delinquents, as though there's some other kind of high school student. Uh, and whenever they wouldn't listen to her, she'd speed up and then slam the brakes and F those kids up. They loved her. And then someone else says, In high school, we gave our bus driver a bottle of Jack and five joints. He was so happy. I bet he was. Hell yeah! Look, if you drive a bus, mm-hmm. I just assume that a little weed and some booze going to go a long way. We have one of those, uh, those like a little bit of a straight stretch, but uh, there was a, a stream that had like one of those big pipes that go underneath the road, or whatever, but it was like a little whoop to do, right? Yeah. I'd say slow down, you know. And right before we get about 100 yards out, we'd like, do it, do it. And he gun it a little bit, and everybody lose their stomach. You know, we thought right, it was right. the yeah. thing. Like, put our hands up like we're on a roller coaster ride. The, the most important thing is you can't tell your parents. But you know, you got to get a seat in the back. I mean, that was the key. If you got a seat in the back, man, then it would really, really work your stomach. Kind of like a roller coaster, man. You need to get a seat in the back to get the full effect. Why is that so exciting? Like, I can still remember right now, even when I started driving, like, there's a spot on Cherry Hill Road. I could be like, oh, we'll make our stomachs. Gun right here. Isn't that great? I don't know why. It's so stupid. Like, now that we're talking about it, it is kind of fun. It doesn't occur in any other real situations in life. You know, you're right. Yeah. Maybe if you drop all of a sudden in a plane, but then you just think you're going to die. So that's never really like It's not as much fun. Yeah, this is a more controlled environment of losing your stomach. Hello, Steven. Welcome to the men's room. Liquor and whores! Liquor and whores! Steven, welcome to the program. Ran a question, question. All right, let's go with this one. And this might be a tough one, because this, this one, I thought about this one for, oh God, about 20 minutes today, thinking, okay, what was my all-time favorite toy growing up? Because there are a lot of cool toys. Oh, man. And depending on the age, it's a little bit different. I, there was a thing called ColecoVision, which probably ended up being one of my favorite toys, because it was a better video game than I'd ever had before. I could play Donkey Kong on it and stuff like that. But I, honest to God... The more I rack my brain, I really think the toy that gave me the greatest joy over the years was a Nerf football. I think as far as the utility player goes, because it's so versatile, it can be used. You can take it anywhere. But I feel like my favorite toy that I played at at a certain age, it was the Evil Knievel wind-up. All right, that was another good one. Love that. And before that, it was, I don't know if you remember these, the electric car racetracks. Those oh, yeah. Psycho oh, those were awesome. little, dude, yeah. I, I lived for those. Yeah, those were great. So what, what would you say was your favorite toy when you were growing up? Um, it's, it's a toss-up between two very good ones, either Legos All right. or G.I. Joes. Now, okay. did you have the G.I. small G.I. Nice. Joes or the big-ass G.I. Joes? Um, I had the, the little G.I. Joes. I was, I was a poor kid. I, I couldn't afford those big ones. No, 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 no. You're a yeah. younger kid. <laughs> it's a, it's a, yeah, understand, it's an this, is, <laughs> this is age, bro. Yeah. yeah. I, think, I think the older I get, the more intriguing that the Lego sets become just based on the fact that they're just so Well, they're crazy. intricate now. When we yeah. were oh, growing they're up, they're amazing man. now. And we do them with the kids now. We do, I mean, they've got a TV show, and we've got bins with the Legos now. And I'll tell you, I mean, as a parent, we break out the Legos, and it is, the most fun those kids have ever? Uh, it, it depends, man. So for me with Legos, it's this. My daughter was really, 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 really into them a couple of years ago. And she would get, you know, the 500-piece set and you're doing, I don't know, the Eiffel Tower or a circus or whatever the case mm-hmm. is. 
That, I found, is not so much fun because you're following the instructions. But when everything's deconstructed and you can just make whatever, then I have a little more enjoyment. We only had right? a rectangle green thing that was like your blank canvas. It wasn't a lot of room to, to do a lot with Legos as far as... No, there wasn't. I mean, like now, there, no. there's nothing that Legos don't recreate. we got Lego recreate. tables, but we've got, we've got Lego everything. Lego glass doors and... I mean, I've got some of the older Legos, too, like the Aquanauts. And, yeah, the kids absolutely love that stuff. And the following instructions is, you're right, like that 5,000-piece set, that stuff's for the birds. Right, because if you miss one bird. piece, the whole thing's after. <laughs> and up, if, right? you wanted, if you really wanted right, to do something right. intricate when we were growing up, it was basically you did, you did like a model car sure. or a model plane, yep. whatever, in this testes, testis glue, whatever it was, man. Testers, yeah. Testers. 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 Testies. 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 Blue. I'm just thinking about what's on my brain right now, you know what I mean? Uh, but man, you would uh, you would absolutely it would get you high. But man, you can never get the glue to not like be all over the outside. <laughs> oh, we <laughs> had to paint that, it. It's like this ghetto yeah. paint job you would do where it just looked like crap. It never looked like the box. No. Because I tried to do like a Trans Am, like smoking the band. I remember that one. It was just like covered in glue oh. on the outside. You gotta take the uh, you gotta take the springs from pens and hook them up into the axles of those model cars and give them hydraulics. See, yeah. you're like yeah. way, way, way that was way. I, I will say mine. the beauty of Legos and. I, I believe at some point they accidentally, intentionally did this. But you real, no matter how old your Legos are, no matter what Legos they make in the future, they all work together. Yeah. Right. So it does not yeah. matter which one you get because right now I have de- it's probably twenty thousand Lego pieces just based on all the different Lego sets they've gotten. They're all deconstructed. They all sit in this big ass bucket. And every once in a while, when the friends come over, it's what they do. But I realize like you can always add to this, man. They will yeah. always fit. I would say the model airplanes too. Yeah. I went through a phase where I really liked making those. What about like, like, uh, like that big? Right, but it was still like it was still hard to do. Like as far yeah. as gluing them together and all that stuff. Like you could, I, I can never as anal as I am, I can never get it to the point where it looked like it should have. No, because I just you know glues everywhere. And- to me, like doing Legos when I was a kid, it's like when you watch a commercial for fast food, right? Try a new so and so cheesy burger. There's what they show you on the commercial, and you know mm-hmm. goddamn well when you get it, it looks nothing like that, right? right? That's to me what the Lego was like. This is what's on the box. Can, well, that's the commercial part. Then when you do it, it looks like what you actually get. I, I can never, I can never make anything look like I wanted to. And, and maybe I don't know, uh, Mike, if you are in this world at all, but do you guys remember uh, there was a uh, like a little soapbox derby competition kind of thing in Boy Scouts? Oh yeah. All right. Well. Some dads and, and sons work together, and they would come up with this really cool car. That oh, it was a foil on the back. Oh, yeah. man, it was just mm-hmm. badass. And I came in with, like, this basic block of wood that was kind of whittled. <laughs> yeah. Painted with their crap I could find in the garage, you know, yeah. which was, you know, used paint from five years ago. Do they still do those? It just looked like, I mean, it looked like I had a primer, you know, soapbox. Not soapbox. Pinewood derby. derby. Pinewood derby. Pinewood derby. I yeah, believe they still do in certain areas. But yeah, there there was always that one kid that showed up, and his dad did a lot more work than he did. He had like, weights in it, ball bearings in yes. the wheels. Like, oh, he was a cheater. Hey, man. Well, my, his dad was a woodworker, so everything's right. like professionally shaped. Yeah, yeah. 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 It's got yeah. the right aerodynamics Gloss to it. Paint, yes. you know, number on the side. That's the one thing my brother would do. Where I really wanted to go to that event, and of course, you're more than invited because it's a family thing. And they would do what is it, Pine Box Derby, right? Mm-hmm. So, what my brother had the ugliest car in the Derby, and I was like, you said basically. He whittled it just enough to legally show that he'd whittled it. Mm-hmm. Then it was painted brown of mm-hmm. all goddamn colors. It had a white racing stripe, and I think it was number nine. But even as a child, I'm looking at this like, this looks like a piece of ass with wheels on it. All right, so he goes to race the kid who has the dad who obviously built right. the car. Because this kid looked dumber in a box. Mm-hmm. I don't know why this kid put this car together. But whatever. I mean, it had the spoiler. It looks like a Formula One car. And here's my brother's brown coffin that he puts in that. My brother smoked his ass in that. Really? And our, oh, my yeah. God. Everyone thought he would lose, See, including my brother. Because, again, it was the ugliest guy. It, it was the ugliest it's, of it's all the, of the injuries. I'm shocked your brother could make a fast one, though. It, dude, it's That's just him. part of his DNA. No, yeah. you know, it's not so much of a boost. It's, 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 it's front weight. It's all kinds of stuff. But, it, but yeah, I mean, my car looked like the primary car in, in the high school parking lot. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, I can't believe that thing runs. On the reason we asked, what was your favorite toy growing up? The National Toy Hall of Fame just announced the 12 finalists for the 2021 class. Uh, the finalists this year are, Ted, you're going to love this, American Girl Dolls. Oh. oh, F American Girl. Stop singing me catalogs. The game Battleship. That's a great game. Uh, billiards. Kind of shocked that hasn't been in yet. Wait, Cabbage Patch that's Kids. A to- that's a toy? Would you consider yeah, look, it's a, it's, pool? Uh, it, look, last year uh, it was Sidewalk Chalk, Baby Nancy, and Jenga. So those, those, but that's fair. I mean, that's fair. My kids like still Jenga did is, Sidewalk Chalk. Jenga is a game for families. 
Mm-hmm. Like, if it's just a bunch of adults getting after it, you call it drinking Jenga, Jenga right, right? right? Yeah. But I'm with thrill. I feel like billiards is specifically like, adults. Like kids might want to play it, but yeah, definitely more. And they only put a couple of these in a year. Uh, the Fisher-Price Corn Popper. This is the toy for, like, what people. What is that? So the kids are just oh! getting to walk, and, it, and it's yeah. got a little bubble on it that's clear, and then there's balls in there, and you and push it, click, click, it, click, and it click, pops, click. and then the balls pop like popcorn inside the little plastic thing. Oh, really? Yeah. And then we've got uh, Masters. I had, a, I had a bubble mower. Oh, that's cool. That blew the bubbles. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, the Masters of Universe Toys, the Pinata, Risk. Again, back Risk. to the original argument. It's just plain sand. 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 No. No. Well, there's a sandbox, you see. But yeah. that's like saying that one of the best children's foods is Legos because they eat them all the goddamn time. Like, yeah. come on, man. And a toy fire engine made the list, too. Oh, uh, I put will, that high on the list. Uh, winners will be voted on by the toy industry experts. Uh, plus voting at uh, the, the toy hall of fame dot org for next week. Around three of the twelve toys end up getting inducted every year, uh, but they'll be announced on November fourth. Sand. I would guess Come on. to me that the uh, uh, risk was risk was put in last year. Uh, was nominated last year, did not get in. I'm saying the battleship, the game battleship. That should be in. This is the one that that's my guarantee to get in. Yeah. What's the rest of the list again? Billiards, American Girl Dolls, uh, Cabbage Patch Kids. It's going to be another strong contender. That should be in there. Uh, Masters of the Universe Toys, The Pinata, Risk, Sand, (laughs) The Settlers of Catan, maybe? Anybody heard of this? I I don't know. And The Toy Fire Engine. I'm about to tell you, that Toy Fire Engine and Sand have real good shots. The Toy Fire Engine, yeah. Sand, I feel like this, right? And and I understand everyone's debate. Kids like Mm -hmm. to play with sand. But it is their birthday or it's Christmas. Give them a Ziploc bag full of sand. And you let me know what their response to this is. Like, I got you a Hall of Fame toy. Dad, it's a bag of sand. That's right, son. Okay. Enjoy. Here's my question. Not a bad argument. Here's my question. (laughs) That's all I'm saying. From a kid's (laughs) point of view, are they as happy to have Legos as they are to have a bucket of sand? You know how the award show goes. It was one on on last night, right? So somebody gets up there and represents whatever show it is. Or, you know, they're, in fact, the winner of the best, you know, actor or whatever. Like, so maybe the guy from Mattel gets up for, I don't know, Battleship or whatever, right? Who represents sand? Like, if they do win... Like, and they say, like, sand. Like, who stands up at the table and goes up there and accepts the award? You know what I mean? On like, behalf of sand. On behalf of sand. Right, because that's a big ass. I mean, like, maybe, like, Hasselhoff in, the, in red shorts. I mean, like, who would be best represented, you know, to to, to be the spokesperson for Flint Marco, for sand? Who's Flint Marco? <laughs> he was the guy that played the, the Sandman in the third Spider-Man movie. Wow. Ah, wow. Okay. See, that would be uh, apropos. At least what about a, a famous volleyball player? It could be. Maybe, but but third, but here's the difference. Volleyball is not treating it; uh, they're treating it as a game, but it is not a toy. I don't think a professional athlete can represent sand as far as a toy goes. I mean, look at the end of the day, if sand gets in there, which I'm voting for sand, <laughs> really? it's going to be somebody from the organization. Just like um, we recognize what sand is, <laughs> but did you sand, have sand grows as, naturally? Did you have sand as but, a kid? No, but I love sand boxes. Yeah. Okay. But I mean, like I didn't have sand at my house, but like. Well, wait, apparently somebody here says, hey, man, it's not, where is it? It's not normal sand. It's sand that's mixed with something or something. Is it that kinetic sand you stuff? You mean like the colored stuff that makes but the wait, waves and stuff? But those are two different. Completely different. Like if it's the kinetic sand, I Which feel like you awesome. would, that's, the, that's cool. Right. I yeah. get it. My kids would be happy to get that as a gift, but, but they're just an, saying sand. But even an ant farm is sand in the middle. I mean, right. technically, right? I mean, isn't the inside of an Etch-A-Sketch technically sand? Mm-hmm. Maybe, maybe sand's been there more than we give it credit for. Maybe we give it an honorable mention. Uh, it's like an, hour, hey, an hourglass. Or is that salt? No, those like sand, sand's sand, through an hourglass. Sand, 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 what about, do you ever have those little things that you could punch and they, they come back oh, yeah, up? Oh, yeah. That's because it was line. sand in the bottle. Oh, that's right. You know what? Yeah. You know what? I stand, You're right. Sand we, we, as we, a we, toy we sucks, but... <laughs> I don't remember they're gone. But you're I just right. remember punching the hell out of those things. You know what? Sand can hold down your basketball hoop. You're right? Yeah. Or sand. Sand's great. Sand's great. Sand is fine. You know what? I take it all back. Sand, you should be in the Toy Hall of Fame. I didn't realize how much you did. My etch a sketch, right? I shake you and you just sand it mm-hmm. all the way. Mm-hmm. Okay. My punch clown pops back random, up. Why? Because sand random, is in that, random, that punch clown. Random, I mean, look, it's two different lifestyles. I think a lot of it's warmer weather or the East Coast. But like, yeah, like little kids will just sit on the damn beach all day and play in the sand. Yes, yes they they'll will. They'll make a moat. They'll have a castle. You know what I mean? They'll yeah, like I'm going to go down to the beach. I'm going to go swimming. And then I'm either going back to the place or I got to go find a bar or something or a right. restaurant to hang out in. Like, I can't sit on this beach all day. Mm-hmm. You're right. 
And they even sell the plastic bucket and the plastic shovel just so your kids can make a mess. And then there's a one guy on the boardwalk who creates this incredible sand structure, and you're just looking at it, and you're like, you made a dumpy little thing from a bucket earlier, and you're like, ah, I suck. Way to embarrass me. Cool. Thank you. Good looking at it. Hello, Julie. Welcome to the men's room. Hola, gentlemen. Hola. Hola. Julie, welcome to the program. Random question. Can you question. turn down your radio for us, please? Uh, sorry, I just moved that out of the room. Yeah. Sorry. Okay. I was listening to you guys. All right. Well, thank you. We appreciate that. All right, Julie, let's go with this one. Uh, when did you need your parents' help, and what did they help you with? Oh. Oh, um, well, probably. Turn down I'm... the radio. Oh, wait. You still hear it? <laughs> yeah. Yes. You got the thing well, cranked. We don't mind you cranking the show, but, you know, it's yeah. kind of messes <laughs> with, the, uh, with the feedback okay, on our end. Okay, there we go. Thank you. All right. Sorry. Uh, probably when I got stuck in the wood pile at our house. <laughs> what now? Yeah. How did you get stuck in a wood pile? Well, I was only like six years old and trying to climb up it. And I got my foot caught and I couldn't get it out between the two pieces of wood. And I was, it was like about six feet high. So, How long were you stuck there? Oh, about 10 minutes because, you know, that was back in the day when nobody came and looked for you. No, that's, that's yeah, the exactly good old right. days. Mm -hmm. my, job, <laughs> yeah. my job was to stack that pile of wood every winter, <laughs> every fall, mm -hmm. whatever the hell they cut it down. Yeah, yeah. that sucks. Uh, the reason we asked, when did you need your parents' help and what did they help you with? A Florida mom was arrested for allegedly helping her son and his friend beat the crap out of another kid. <laughs> Ashley Ruffin, who was 30, is accused of grabbing the boy by his hair and arm and holding him back while her son and another bully beat him. According to the Flagler County Sheriff's Office. Flagler County, by the way, beautiful beaches. The victim told police that he was sitting with his friends outside of a sports complex at a middle school in Palm Coast when he was attacked by the two boys. His friends ran over to help, and at some point during the scuffle, the victim said that Ruffin restrained him and allowed her son and the other boy to continue to pummel him. Witnesses corroborated the boy's story, also told cops that uh, she uh, flashed a taser at one Jesus. point during the brawl. The victim's mother reported the incident to uh, an officer at the middle school, who in turn uh, flagged it to the sheriff's office. Uh, she was hit with a battery and child abuse charge and has denied that she tried to hurt the child and claimed in a Facebook Live video that she was only trying to pull her son away from the altercation. Uh, the juveniles involved uh, may also face battery charges, according to authorities. That's good times. You can't. Yeah. I mean, that's all, man. And look, I've given my kids advice on what I would do if I were them in these situations. But, like, mm -hmm. I'm not going to show up at your school and physically restrain look, or beat even, the piss even out if, of a kid. Uh, but look, even when my kids, they never really got into physical confrontations as much. But if someone would say something that would really, like, hurt my kids' feelings or upset them or whatever, and they would come home, and I could tell they were down and they were upset and they were crying and all that stuff, you know, like... I just wanted to go in my car and beat the crap out of that kid's parents and just hope that the parents were bigger than me. <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> like, open the door and there's a huge, huge, uh, wrong address. Uh, sorry, my bad. <laughs> <laughs> More of the random question, question coming up. 206-421-ROCK. Realtors abide by a code of ethics. This is Article 9 in action. Beth, a first-time homebuyer, knew nothing about the home buying process, except that she wanted to buy a home. But her Realtor had the expertise to make sure Beth understood every document, even giving her copies to review with her lawyer so Beth could close on her first home with confidence. Complicated things explained in simple terms. The difference between an agent and a Realtor is real. Realtors are members of the National Association of Realtors. That's who we are. This podcast is brought to you by the Washington State Department of Health. When we think about the COVID-19 vaccine hesitancy in the black community, let's remember, it didn't happen by chance. It's justified in history. But the will to change the narrative is strong today, and our people are lending their voices to the conversation. We're sharing our stories and the reasons that made us choose the vaccine so we can lead the way for others to make a well-informed choice, too. To hear our stories, visit hereforuswa.org. Kickstart summer with Memorial Day values at Lowe's. Choose four or more eligible Samsung appliances to complete your dream kitchen and laundry room. Plus, get 10% back via MasterCard gift card rebate. Also, save now on the latest Samsung appliances, like the bespoke refrigerator with panels in a variety of colors to mix and match. It's an easy way to create your own unique look. Memorial Day values start now at Lowe's. Shop in-store or online today. Offer ends June 13th. See Lowe's.com slash rebates for details. Geico asks, how would you love a chance to save some money on insurance? Of course you would. And when it comes to great rates on insurance, Geico can help. 
like with insurance for your car, truck, motorcycle, boat, and RV. Even help with homeowners or renters coverage. Plus, add an easy-to-use mobile app, available 24-hour roadside assistance, and more, and GEICO is an easy choice. Switch today and see all the ways you could save. It's easy. Simply go to GEICO.com or contact your local agent today. In KISW, Yay! you're in the men's room. Good job. Chance for you to uh, pick up some tickets to see Ghost in Volbeat's Climate Pledge Arena. At 420, we'll give you the secret word. Secret. Secret word. Then you go to KSLB.com, put the word in there, and then uh, you'll be eligible to win the tickets to Ghost and Volby with whoever else goes there and does the same thing. So, Ghost and Volbeat. Mm-hmm. Picturing the two of them mashing up. Just a ghost that's like, boo! Boo, 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 <laughs> Something like that. <laughs> Scary! Scary music! All right, here's our random question question. 206-421-RUN. Random, random, random. Hello, random, Justin. Random, Welcome random, to the men's room. Random. Hola, gentlemen. Hola. Hola. Justin, welcome to the program. Random question, question. All right, we're talking about, a lot about being a kid today. Why don't we stay on that train for a minute? What uh, what terrified you as a child? <laughs> what just scared the living hell out of you? Believable or not? Oh, man. I can't really that really like, freaked me out except for um, back it was like my first year of high school, and I was telling them I'm coming back home. And there was police cars out. Of it. But it turns out a burglar broke into our house, got, got all of our stuff wrangled up. My sister came in, chased them out because she had her keys in her hand, and they jumped out of my window. So for like the next like two or three years, I went up was paranoid or something left the house. Yeah. Need to make sure, need to make sure that everything was, was locked. We had a security system. It was. Freaked out. Like even today, like I'll leave my I'll leave my house. Get like five away from the house. I'm like, did I lock my house? I'll turn around and I'll lock it. Yeah, you know what, man? I, I, I'm known to do that. Did I cr- close the garage door? Whatever. And I'll drive back just to make sure that the I... The garage know. door's the one, man. But you went through a traumatic experience. I don't think that's very unusual. I think... I mean, a lot of people have that happen to them as adults and just sell the house. <laughs> right. You know, they, they move because they're, they're so freaked out by what happened in that home that they can never get past it. They, and it's hard enough to get a good night's sleep. Right, right, right. Let alone thinking about what the hell, you know, could happen. That's a fact. All right, the reason we asked what terrified you as a child... A, uh, a list of harmless threats that terrified children. Uh, BuzzFeed has put those together. Supposed threats that terrified, specifically in this instance, they say millennials. Billy, when, I'm going to kill you. When they were younger, but are almost actually harmless. Here are some of the highlights. Uh, one is thinking that a ceiling fan could fall on you if you left it on while you were sleeping. I never really had never, that problem. Never thought I never had that one. I always I, leave them on. I but now too. that you bring it up, I'm sure I will. Uh, the knowledge that if you swallowed gum... It would stay in your stomach for some seven, seven years. Seven years. The knowledge, years. the knowledge of that. Yeah, we didn't have Google back then. You know what I mean? Like we, those. Well, lot- that's why your parents can just tell you this crap, and you're like, "Oh my god, that sounds terrible." Mm-hmm. Right? Or your older siblings, or the older siblings. Right? But you, you could not prove, you could not disprove it. But they never said anything mm-hmm. bad would happen. They just said it would be in your stomach for seven years, and I was like, "All right." Uh, that if you were to somehow uh, turn the light on in the car while your parents were driving, the car that's, will immediately crash. You can never turn the light on. And that's illegal. That's what they always said. It's illegal to turn the light on inside the car. That was like a giant thing. You don't I don't know that? if it is or if it's not, but that was beaten in, at night, right? Yeah. Well, it was only a dome light back then. So I know. basically you illuminated the entire car. Where now they have specific little spots, but that's still, it's still annoying as hell. Like, hey, when you go back there, the light on. You know what I mean? Like, I'm. Instantly. If you, like, if you drop something in my parents' car at night, Except that it is gone until you get where you're going. If you turn that light on, man, my father mm-hmm. would kill you. I don't know what it is about that, but that was a, that was a big tip. It was huge. It was like the worst yeah. thing you could do, apparently, in the car. And then if you put it on the wrong setting where it wasn't for the door, you know what I mean? <laughs> and then they got real pissed off at you. Like, why'd you just put that thing on, you know, like all the time? It's amazing things parents just really got upset mm-hmm. about. Uh, being horrified that your shoe could possibly get sucked into an escalator. I still look at my shoelace. Shoes yes. Before at my shoelaces, before I get on an escalator, I don't know why that 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 still freaks me the hell. I saw a girl. It was a girl I knew. I was maybe six years old, so she was probably about nine or ten. We were with her parents, or like some department store or something. But her shoelace did get stuck in the escalator, and it was. Uh, it seemed very traumatic, as best as I remember from her response to what was going on. The escalator stopped. The manager's out there, and I'm like, man. Mm-hmm. Do not let your shoe let. And I'm like, to this day, it still bugs me. Another weird thing that might have terrified you as a child uh, quicksand being a very prevalent hazard in life. Yes. Well, that was a every big one. TV show, yeah. it was everywhere. Where is it? It could be in your backyard. But where is it? 
where is home to quicksand? You know what I mean? Like, we know where like, Lock, we know where Nessie is, right? But like where, where do you go? Florida, South Carolina. All right. Places like that. But during the 70s, anyway, if you watch TV, any drama that was on TV, at some point, the main character, and it would always be a cliffhanger. Like, they stepped in quicksand, and as we it understood... It could be Batman. It, 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 it could have been Laurel and Hardy. It didn't matter if they went Everybody. on an adventure. You know what I mean? There's Bionic like, Man, Dukes of Hazard, the quicksand. A-Team. It's like, oh my God! Quick say it's the most it dangerous every, thing. It, it was everywhere. It was insane. It was, I mean, right. I remember growing up, I was scared, very scared of it. And everybody died. Uh, everybody went to quick say that. And the last thing you saw, the last thing you saw was their arm, right? Mm-hmm. And at some point, when it got like to their elbow, then they just disappeared instantly. Gone. Does that really exist? Has Quick, anyone ever really died? I'm sure I, someone I'm has. I'm sure but there's the way, some version of it, but it's not the same way we grew up with it in TV. Okay. So what I understand about quicksand, like some animals end up succumbing to it because animals just aren't particularly I understand afraid. a tar pit. But you they say, I mean? like, with human beings, essentially, if you were to lay on your back, you're not going to sink. And usually, usually not always, it's not deep enough. You know, it's not like the So it's the equivalent of being like an assault, like an assault lake or like an assault float. You just stay to the top. Yeah, they're like, if, the if you're to land your back, kind of roll out of there, you'd be fine. Uh, I think more people probably die in the mud and stuff. For sure. Trying to go out in the ocean. Like, you know what I mean? Like when the when the tide's out. Oh, yeah, yeah. Because mm-hmm. you get, it's so heavy to get in and out of there. Uh, worrying that if you swallowed a seed, a plant will grow inside of you. Yeah. That's real. I never had that problem because mm-hmm. I never ate anything with seeds. That if you rip the uh, the tag off your uh, mattress, you'd go to prison. Yeah. it basically threatens you like that. Well, There's no other consumer product that threatens you like that. It, it, removal of this tag is illegal. We only found out recently that that does not apply to the consumer. It applies to the retailer. Aha. Uh-huh. So, okay. Right. So that tag that says, hey, it's illegal to remove this. And we've spent our entire lives going, what will happen if I do it? It has nothing to do with us who bought the mattress. Mm-hmm. It's, it's specifically the retailers. And number one, the Bermuda Triangle being a mysterious and massive concern. However, as you said uh, a few times... Your dad kind of patrolled that area. That so just, he, just to try to figure out what what was going his on. His so gig the in the navy. The military thought it was enough of a concern to actually go down there and see what the hell's going on. They absolutely did. You know, yeah. they're going to investigate anything, whether they tell you about it or not. But they're going to investigate anything that seems important or mysterious. So this was the Steves. You know, kind of during the heyday of the Bermuda Triangle. My father's in the U.S. Navy. They're stationed in Newfoundland, Canada. So. Every day, or five days a week, I don't know how many, but either way, every day it was the same thing. It was a 13-hour round trip. And he's like, man, we got on the spunky mind. He's not a pilot, so it's not even like he's looking out the window. He and his crew, they got in the back of this plane, and this big-ass plane took off from Canada, and it flew down to the Bermuda Triangle with the expressed purpose of trying to disappear to see to see what's going on. So my, my father... Did they put the lower-ranking people on these planes? Is that I don't know, like? but my, my father always explained. He said, you know, you realize when you're in the military, there's not a mission you want to fail. He goes, and then I discovered the mission that we all wanted to fail because the idea was, hey, if you guys disappear, we think we have these new communication things that are set up. We can stay in contact. And my father, you know, at that time, he's like, look, nobody knows what's going on with the Bermuda Triangle. He goes, but the one thing that happened 100% of the time is that you lose contact. So he goes, oh, so your so inter- their instrument panel goes, goes right. wacky and you know what I mean? Like, I always just remember like when they when they did it f- fictionally, like, you know, yeah, everything spins around. Everything's spinning and things are going yeah, nuts like, and look, you lose power. And, yeah, and he said, none of us, like none of us wanted to achieve this mission. He goes, so if we complete the mission, we effing disappear forever. So, but, but that said, you are being tracked. So it's not like you could go around it. I mean, they would fly through and he said, every day we're terrified. Could, could you? It's not like you're getting shot down. It's not. I would just want to land in Bermuda don't. and spend the weekend. Well, he said this was the goal. So one of the things they always did, they always checked the parachutes because he said we prayed to God because everyone hated this mission because <laughs> it's 13 hours of being bored. And if you're successful, you've disappeared without a trace off the face of the earth, which is not what anybody wants to do, right? So he said our goal, well, not our goal, <laughs> but our, our hope was that we'd have mechanical trouble. Once we hit the tropics, because he goes, look, then we jump the hell out of the plane, let the plane go into the ocean, and the Navy would take, it, based on an estimation of what he did, about a week to get him. to go down and pick him up. So he said, man, every day, it's like, once we were kind of like over Florida, we're like, come on, baby, yeah, have like some mechanical fit. Yeah. yeah. Like it's paradise. Like, please. Palm trees. Let's have mechanical fit. Especially fill. when you're leaving from Canada in the cold and the wind. Well, so that's the other thing. When you fly back and the door opens in Newfoundland, Canada, it feels like you're in Newfoundland, Canada. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I just watched random, the whole show random, on the Bermuda random, Triangle. Random, random, this is more just on the boats random, and some of the stuff there. It's like, yeah, it's a rogue wave. Random, 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 that, see, that's random, a lot. Of, now, that's a boat. Random, random, but in the plane, it's when they disappear, you're like, what the hell? I mean, how big is this wave, man? No, no, no. Like, the planes are a different story. But it is funny that, like, as science, as te- I shouldn't say science, as technology's come along, yeah. 
You know, the Bermuda Triangle isn't nearly as interesting. It's not. No, it's not. It kind of sucks. Could, yeah, well, you could actually figure out what happened. It's like, all right. See, this thing, man, we had Bigfoot, Loch Ness Monster, Bermuda Triangle, and the Titanic. Those were like the big four when I was growing they up. They've like, been uh, taking care of as Titanic. Yeah, and it's kind of cool. Like, uh, uh, they found it. Hello, I know now that they found it. You're like, well, no, I don't care. Okay. Hello, Kevin. Welcome to the men's room. Hola. Hola. Kevin, welcome to the program. Random question, question. All right, let's go with this. Awesome. One. I uh, I know it's been a while since we've done a lot of things, uh, but uh, what was worth the wait? Do you remember anything that was actually worth the wait? Whether it was a movie, maybe a concert that you wanted to see, a vacation that you were taking. Sometimes you get all you know, hyped up about going someplace or whatever, and it's just kind of whatever. You, you know. know. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, man. Um, hmm, worth the wait. Um, I guess, I guess there was a, a girl in high school that I definitely was sought, uh, uh, really interested in and she was going out with my buddy. Then she ended up going out with another guy and I thought, the heck with it. I, I am not gonna, you know, anyway, I waited forever for her and then just out of nowhere, of course, it was like a year or two out of high school. Who comes knocking on my door? Yes, she comes knocking on my door. Though I waited long and, and, and hard, but get it? And hard? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, we got you, bro. Yuck, 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 yuck. I see what you did there. Crazy oh, comedian. Oh, my goodness. Hey anyway, <laughs> it was so worth the wait. My gosh. Um, I, I hope that wasn't too. Uh, no, that's, that's uh, exactly. That's, it, oh, that's exactly what we're. No, no, for. it's the long and hard. Just everybody off. Yeah, there's been a lot. Like, there's <laughs> been a lot of people who have sat on the bench for numbers and numbers of years waiting for. Yeah, you know, waiting for their shot at uh, whatever they're waiting for there. And the other person knows they've got them on the bench too. Yeah. That's why they wait to get They're there. stringing them on. You know, like anything else. Oh, I've been a bench player, man. Like I two and a half I've years. Seen but I did before. finally get laid, and it's like. God damn, that's what I was waiting for, yeah, man. Because it, I pitched <laughs> one game and I had some good stats. It's, it's back, I never played again, it's, it's but back, I finally got in. It's back to Eddie Murphy and his uh, you know, routine about uh, the cracker, man. If you've been in the desert for you know like a week and you haven't eaten, man, that cracker is going to taste really good. Like, this ain't a cracker, this is a Ritz. What is God damn right. This is the greatest cracker I've ever tasted. You know? Hey, it's worth it. Mm -hmm. The reason we asked what was worth the wait, an Atlanta restaurant employee who was shot while witnessing a crime was put on hold when he called 911 or 911. Please hold, said the Atlanta 911 recording after a restaurant employee stepped outside for a break and witnessed two men trying to break into a car. So upon noticing uh, the employee, the two thieves turned and shot at him and they uh, shot him in the arm. Well, they got away with the car while the employee tried to repeatedly get a hold of anyone in 911, but he was put on hold every time he attempted to make a call. So eventually, a restaurant co-worker called an off-duty officer that she knows. Now, that officer used his radio to get in contact with the communication center to explain the situation. Well, they didn't want to wait any longer because the guy's bleeding out. Uh, so they, the co-workers drove the injured employee to the hospital themselves. Saved money. All right. Uh, we re researched the incident and have not been able to locate a call placed by the victim, according to the Atlanta Police Department. Mm -hmm. uh, we are aware a female employee of the business called 911 and her call was answered by a call taker. This is the confusing part of the statement. We have researched this incident and have not been able to locate the call placed by the victim. In the same breath, we are aware a female employee of the business called 911 and her call was answered by a call taker. Hence, they did know that the victim called 911. Uh, the incident follows another uh, from earlier in September when a motorist who thought they were being followed in a road rage incident received the same hold please recording when attempting to dial 911. That man said he initially thought that he would be on hold for just a few minutes. But his uh, view turned out to be optimistic. <laughs> but it kept repeating. They kept putting me on hold. You're very important to us. Yes, yeah. exactly. You'll be fine. Uh, but the spokesperson says, like most 911 centers, there are times when we will experience an influx of calls, leading to some callers being placed on hold for the next caller uh, to be taken. If a caller is placed on hold, hangs up and calls back repeatedly, they go back to the queue. So every time you hang up, uh, you're going to go back in line to the people who are waiting. And that's the most important thing I think you can learn from this. If you do call 911 right. and they put you on hold... Uh, you are in line, so you might be the third caller. But if you hang up and someone calls uh, in the same time that you've hung up, then you're going to be placed farther down the line. Mm -hmm. Maybe they should so, set it up like they do when you call anywhere else, right? So it's like, hey, 911, look, before we even start, if this is something stupid, hit one, right? Your cat's stuck in a tree. We don't care. Hit one. We'll figure it out. 
if you're bleeding or someone's dying, hit two, right? Just urgency wise, maybe. Well, I think that's the thing too. Like, I don't. Maybe I guess some people do use nine one one for stupid stuff. Yeah. But ideally, to me, like if you're if you're if I'm dialing nine one one, somebody somebody's life is in danger. Something if happens. you are, because think about all the nine one one calls that get like, my feet hurt. Like, sir, I mean, what, okay. Like, what do you want us to do? Not emergency numbers four one one. Three one one. Is it three? Four one one's info. Oh, four one one is info. Mm-hmm. Well, no wonder yeah. I haven't been able to get anybody over on. <laughs> Has been for a long time. Right, right, I didn't even know they still existed. Is there still a number to call the time and the temperature? Ooh. Do we know that? They're, Don't please know. look at your phone. I swear to God, man, when we were in radio, we had to have things on kind of a, a military time, like, yeah. like a, whatever the satellite clock is. I can't remember the name of it. But anyway, we had to call this number and make sure that our, our, uh, our times on the board were precise. <laughs> now, they give you the temperature, too. I don't know that people still do it because with the phone, you don't need to do it. But when I was growing up, there would be an argument about what time it is. And the argument was within three minutes of each other. I think mm-hmm. it's 9 o'clock. You think it's 8.57. What is the line that someone would always say? I set mine because that's what they said on the radio. Okay? Yep. Now, I believe this to be a very truthful thing. And, in fact, if I ever set my, my watch or my clock mm-hmm. to what the radio said, I felt very good about myself. But now I'm in radio. Guess what? Yeah. yeah. No, those, those are time, maybe time when it's ballpark, Time man. was very important. And not because people didn't wear watches. It was because it wasn't on your phone. So if something happened to your watch, whatever the deal was, you know, like we were told at one point in time at a station I worked at, you had to tell the time, especially when I worked in the morning, you had to tell the time three different ways. Because some people, some people, not right. how they interpret it, how they interpret the time. 8, 15, 15 minutes after the hour, 8 o'clock. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And then you tell the time up to a until quarter half. So it'll be 7, 15, 15 after 7, 45 until 8. Good morning. <laughs> right. like, oh, God damn it, you didn't get it the first time? 7, 15? You're an adult. You know how to tell time. Come on, man. You're better than that. <laughs> you go tell three ways. Maybe they didn't get it the first time around. Who knows? Oh, is that our fault? <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> Jesus. Hello, Dave. Welcome to the men's room. Good afternoon, gentlemen. Hola. Hola. Dave, welcome to the program. And the random question, question. All right, let's see here. All right. Okay. Let's go with this one. What is the dirtiest place, would you say, uh, Dave, in your home? What is the dirtiest place right now in your home? Um... <clears throat> Not inside the home, I would say. We have, uh, we live in Lake Stevens on six acres. And there's an old shed, if you will, that's down the hill a bit that we never used. And it's just overgrown and, you know. Oh, yeah. Can, can, you, can, you, can you see it? As it? I mean, if you have six acres, I'm assuming you're out in the middle of nowhere, so it's not like unsightly for anybody else, right? This would not be an HOA oh, yeah. concern. <laughs> no, 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 no. Well, you know, <laughs> well, look, there, there's, like we do have property we don't see. So, I mean, I you could have a homeless camp down there for all I know. I just, I'm not going down there. Okay. Uh, that's a perfect place for a homeless camp. By the way, yeah. by the way you guys were not on the radio on last Monday? Oh, last uh, I, Monday, you said? Yeah. Yeah, we were not. We were on. Uh, we were off all last week, Dave. No, I know. Uh, but <laughs> you guys were all off the air on, or not live on Monday. I looked at my wife. I said, I guarantee you those guys are in Vegas and they're going to be going to the Baltimore Ra- Raiders game <laughs> to New York. New Arena. <laughs> I did exactly mm-hmm. that. Yeah. That was the whole thing, bro. Yep. Yeah. So Miles told me the schedule when the schedule was released. Got on the phone, my wife instantly. And the amount of time it took her to decide whether or not she wanted to go, the ticket prices went up a hundred dollars each. Jesus. Uh, oh yeah. I mean, like we're talking. She's like, "Well, I'm like, they just went up a hundred bucks." So yes, we did in fact go down and watch the Baltimore Ravens lose an incredible game against the Raiders. Where do you guys think the dirtiest part of your uh, of your place is right now? Are you talking about like physical dirty or, or like, like, like or just uh, like clutter? Like this is something that I need to do. I mean, it could be either one. Like I'm thinking to myself, like I've got. Uh, my shower curtain, I've been ignoring it for probably about two to three months. And it's starting to get that pink hue Yep, to the point where... like, What is that? When I, it's soap mold. scum? It's mold. No, it's absolutely mold. It's the same well, what thing. is soap scum? I, I, People I always use that term. I, I, but I, I feel like mold you can notice. But that pink stuff, like, what is that? Because it forms in your it's, toilet bowl. It right. forms on my shower curtain. I know I've got to buy a new shower curtain. Shower curtain rod's been there for probably since like 2003. Sure. It's, easy. it's like rusted and nasty ass. Uh, the reason we ask what's the dirtiest place in your home, believe it or not, it's in your bathroom. Do you know where it is in your bathroom? Truth your sink. Reason. You'd think all of those things. A new study has revealed the filthiest part of your bathroom is not the toilet or the sink. Uh, basically, it's the towel rack. 
Ew. Twofold. Researchers say the towel racks are rarely clean when people scrub their bathroom, but they should be because damp towels are an ideal breeding ground for harmful uh, microorganisms and bacteria. And two towel racks and bathroom uh, radiators attract dust, grime, mold, and mildew. Oh, right, right. Which isn't just unclean. It can lead to irritated skin and even illness. Uh, Scientists say you should clean your towel rack three times a month. Wow. I just learned that it was a 30-day loofah. (laughs) Right. I've been using that thing for like six months. Your guess is as good as mine. Coming up, categories will be uh, delicious pizza toppings and your favorite children educational TV shows. You are listening to The Men's Room. Realtors abide by a code of ethics. This is Article 9 in action. Beth, a first-time homebuyer, knew nothing about the home buying process, except that she wanted to buy a home. But her Realtor had the expertise to make sure Beth understood every document, even giving her copies to review with her lawyer so Beth could close on her first home with confidence. Complicated things explained in simple terms. The difference between an agent and a Realtor is real. Realtors are members of the National Association of Realtors. That's who we are. This podcast is brought to you by the Washington State Department of Health. When we think about the COVID-19 vaccine hesitancy in the black community, let's remember, it didn't happen by chance. It's justified in history. But the will to change the narrative is strong today, and our people are lending their voices to the conversation. We're sharing our stories and the reasons that made us choose the vaccine so we can lead the way for others to make a well-informed choice, too. To hear our stories, visit hereforuswa.org. Kickstart summer with Memorial Day values at Lowe's. Choose four or more eligible Samsung appliances to complete your dream kitchen and laundry room. Plus, get 10% back via MasterCard gift card rebate. Also, save now on the latest Samsung appliances, like the bespoke refrigerator with panels in a variety of colors to mix and match. It's an easy way to create your own unique look. Memorial Day values start now at Lowe's. Shop in-store or online today. Offer ends June 13th. See Lowe's.com slash rebates for details.